Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in on Smelly Saturday School. This uh, episode, we're, we're just getting rolling with these and uh, appreciate you guys' uh, patience uh, in listening to this. This episode is sponsored by per- our people over at Perfect Keto. If you want to make sure that you're getting the best keto products in the world, you're going to want to check out perfectketo.com. They, uh, they have a wide array of uh, supplements that can help you a- along the way in your keto diet. And they got some snacks that could really help a lot. They have, um, they have protein bars that have collagen in them that taste really good. My favorite is the cookie dough one. They have cookies um, that are going to have a low impact on your metabolism because uh, they don't have sugar in them. And they also don't use artificial sweeteners in any of their products. They got nootropics. They got protein powder. They got it all. And then also uh, we're sponsored by Piedmontese. Give a shout out to the people over at Piedmontese. We really appreciate their support as well. It's the best meat that you're going to buy. It's tender. It's juicy. It's lean. It's leaner than any other steaks, any other meat that you're going to get. Um, they even have uh, ground beef that's like 96 or 94 percent. And uh, even that stuff's not dry. I don't know how they figured it out. It's the type of cattle that they have. Um, the, the cows are super jacked. They look like bodybuilders. And uh, we really appreciate their support. But we're excited to, uh, to bring this to you guys. Um, the website for Piedmontese is piedmontese.com that's p-i-e-d-m-o-n-t-e-s-e dot com at checkout enter promo code power project for 25 percent off your order and if your order is 99 dollars or more and also for perfect keto it's just perfectketo.com slash power 25 same promo code power project for 25 percent off your order of any order of 29 dollars or more we got all that stuff out of the way and it's time to get rolling mm-hmm. here on smelly saturday school we're we're working on naming it and you guys can actually probably help us if you want to you know maybe vibe with uh something along the lines of the people's coach or i i andrew came up with the idea of saturday school um i'm digging that but uh it's a new format that we're trying out and uh i'm basically going to answer a question we're going to go five to seven minutes or so and uh just kind of give you like a little something a little different so here we go andrew's going to kick it off with the first question here yeah buddy um i know times are a little bit different right now with these shelter in place the uh, the lockdown gyms being shut down and stuff but the unpopular truth is um people have kind of always been struggling they've always been in a rut right you hear about it all the time i'm guilty of saying that as well um, so regardless of our, everyone's current situation, uh, Mark, how does somebody get out of a rut when it comes to their fitness? Man, life is a battle. You know, you have a lot of ups and downs and, uh, it's, it, it can be very difficult to turn your life, um, into being mechanical. It can be very different, difficult to turn your life into being factual, but I have found it to be super helpful. And, uh, let me explain how I, how, what I found to be helpful exactly. So first of all, um, there's no job that's too great when it's broken down into smaller parts. I believe Henry Ford is, is, uh, famous for saying, uh, something along those lines, or maybe it was Harrison Ford and maybe it was in, uh, the fugitive. I don't remember, but anyway, somebody said that quote and, uh, I always really liked it a lot because, you know, we could sit here and we could think about, uh, the power project and, and man, like we got a lot of work to do and stuff, but then I can kind of just, I can break it down into facts and I can say, I got my boy, Andrew, he's handling all the audio. He's handling all the visual. He handles all the tech stuff. And that's not really a major concern of mine. So I don't really need to worry myself with that. I'm a big fan of not really worrying about anything, but here's how you get yourself to this point and then here's how it frees up time to not get into a rut. So I will get to my point. Um, and then I also know like, you know, we're going to do a podcast and we're going to have some really smart people on here. We're going to have people that are going to talk over my head and that can be intimidating. Um, but again, I know I got my boy Andrew here. I know I got in SEMA here. I have people that have different perspectives. I have people that have different life experiences. And so, Um, if I'm, you know, uh, if I'm kind of stuck, I know that I have other people to rely on. So you can bring down your levels of anxiety. You can really actually, you know, they talk about like flattening the curve. You can smash the ever living crap out of your anxiety by bringing in facts. Sometimes the facts can be scary because sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you could be really dealing with something that is, um, is really brutal but just a little bit on anxiety. 
anxiety is fear of something that hasn't happened. You know, so you kind of think about that anxiety is fear over something that hasn't happened. Um, fear is something that is uh, learned. You know, being scared of stuff is something that is, is learned. Um, we do have in our DNA, we do have the ability to uh, notice danger and notice when things are dangerous. And that's kind of a different thing. Like the tiger over there, that tiger is dangerous. You know, I'm not going near that tiger. Um, but normally our fears in today's society are, I would say, 95%. Um, psychological and most of the struggle of today's world is psychological. Um, every once in a while you could have something that's physiological. So you get a diagnosis and you have cancer right now who deals really, really poorly with cancer. Most of the time it's the family members that struggle with it. And sometimes it's the person, right? Obviously, the person's going to struggle with it as well. But normally, the people uh, that are impacted the worst or that are hurt the worst, they're like, man, why'd that have to happen to him? Normally, the cancer patient isn't thinking, why did this have to happen to me? Now, they do get into that situation for periods of time. They kind of come in and out of that because they get really sick. It's a brutal, you know, the therapy for it is brutal. You throw up a lot. I've been around a lot of people have had it before and it is just a nightmare. But I would say that it's, even though the, even though the other people aren't going through it, the family members probably think about it uh, in, in the worst way. But again, if we're trying to, if we're trying to apply facts to stuff, then we would have to say, okay, well, if I got cancer, what kind of cancer is it? Okay, it's this kind of cancer. Okay, well, there's X amount of treatments for it. My good friend, Jason Kalipa, his daughter went through leukemia. And they got really sad. They were super upset. They cried a lot. They cried a lot in the hospital. The wife said, Ashley, she came to Jason and she came to the rest of the family and said, nope, we're not crying. And everybody was like, what? <laughs> How do we not cry? Our eight-year-old daughter, maybe seven-year-old daughter, Ava, has leukemia. How are we not going to cry? And what she said was, we're not crying right here. You know, once, once you walk through the doors of this hospital, we are not crying. Somebody needs to cry, you go and you cry by yourself somewhere else. <laughs> but she was talking about banding together. She was talking about being strong. And then she talked about this is this comes from epistemology, which I don't think maybe she doesn't is unaware. But epistemology is um, just like what can be knowable. What's knowable about this topic? What's knowable about leukemia? What's the survival rate? Because let's just say the survival rate. Let's say the survival rate's ten percent. Let's say it's really low, which it's not that low, right? But let's just say it's ten percent. Well, you can say I'm going to be part of that ten percent. And I want to figure out what are the facts? What's the information? How do we learn a lot about this? Who's an expert? What, where's a book I can read? Point me to it. Point me to somebody who's read all these books. Um, where are the best doctors? Where are the best uh, people that know about this? Who somebody somewhere knows about this? Somebody else had leukemia. My mom's uh, sister died of leukemia uh, when she was nine years old. My mom used to watch, watch her every day. It was like, it was like her, it was like her own daughter um, slash best friend slash baby sister, you know? And it was, it was very hard, but that was 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Times have changed. We have new technology. We have new treatments. We have hope. And so when you start to uh, think about I realize this is like a lot of different things I'm talking about all at one time, right? But for those of you that are stuck in a rut, start to think about what's, what's knowable about the situation that I'm in. Who else gets into a rut? Well, uh, professional basketball players get into a rut. Professional baseball players, professional baseball players can only hit the ball 30% of the time, and those are the, some of the best guys. Those are the guys that go to the All-Star game. You know, if you if you bat, you know, 300 or 350 or something for your career, then you're you're a monster. So <clears throat> what's knowable about the situation? Well, a lot of people get into a rut. Well, why do they get into a rut? 
Um, there's a great quote that I love, and it says, he, um, he who stops is overwhelmed, distanced, and crushed, right? So you should never be overwhelmed. There's no reason to be overwhelmed because – because now you can be overwhelmed for like a moment. That's okay. Like we're all human. You're going to slip up. We're going to get behind and you might feel that, Oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. Okay. But if you're prepared, you should never really be overwhelmed. I know we all have that friend where everything's like on point, everything you're, and you always look at them and you're like, how is this possible? How does this guy do this? Well, it's not because he's better than you at anything. It's just that he's prepared. He learned somewhere along the way the importance of being prepared. And you've heard people say this before. If you're not prepared, uh, you're, you're preparing to fail, right? So you always want to try to figure out how can I be a step ahead? You do not need to be smart to be a step ahead. You don't need to be fast to be a step ahead. You don't need to be quick. You don't need to be strong. You don't really need to be anything. You don't need anything um, from a genetic standpoint to be a step ahead. Um, you just need to anticipate what is going to be necessary, uh, for the next thing that you're getting into. So you just need to be prepared. It's about preparedness. So back to the original question of how do you get out of a slump? You get out of a slump by being prepared. And the way that you're prepared is that you have a skill set that can prevent you from ever even thinking about a slump in the first place. <clears throat> a skill set that would prevent you from getting into a slump. Let's say that you are a triathlete, but you also have learned how to lift. You know how to do squats. You know how to do bench. You know how to do deadlift. And um, let's say you live in New York, like my uncle. So, my uncle gets in a little rut. He's not running as much as he used to. Maybe he hurt his ankle. Maybe it's the winter. And maybe that same drive that was calling him years ago to wake up at four and to be hitting the pavement at five uh, when it's 20 degrees out and it's wet and snowing, maybe that's gone. Like maybe some of that died off. Maybe he just doesn't have that anymore. However, he learned how to lift. He learned how to bench. He learned how to squat. He learned how to deadlift. So can he flip his mind over to that? Like, hey, man, I ain't. you wake up, it's snowing outside. You know, you're like, I should really go run. And then your wife makes you like a hot cocoa. And then like, there you are, like <clears throat> everything unravels and you're watching football all day, uh, sitting on your sofa with the fireplace on, which sounds way better, right? And we all have those moments where we've talked ourselves out of, doing one thing and kind of went the complete uh, opposite route. But our, our, uh, our ladies know what's best for us. We need to calm the hell down every once in a while. But, you know, back to that scenario. Well, if my uncle hadn't learned how to lift, he wouldn't be able to flip to something different. So for me, in times of quarantine, luckily, you know, I, I was looking on my phone the other day, like some stuff popped up from my iCloud I have kind of figured out the iCloud, by the way, which is a whole nother podcast uh, for a whole nother day because no one's ever figured it out in the history of the world, I don't think. Um, but I saw some like uh, older videos and stuff, and it was like July of, uh, I think, 20, 2018, which isn't that long ago, but I was running on the treadmill. And it, and it says, uh, you know, it's like one of those kind of Gary V looking uh, IG clips. And it says, you know, Mark Bell, like in this in this black print on a white background says Mark Bell running question mark. <clears throat> and it's me running to the uh, half natty anthem that we have, that music that you guys always hear playing in the background. Had I not started doing that two years ago, I would not be prepared for what's going on today. When the quarantine hit, um, we decided to uh, shut down Super Training Gym for everybody. And I thought it would be a dick move if I was in there training uh, while everybody else was uh, kind of feeling um, not so great and not being able to have access to gyms. And, you know, I thought mainly about my own crew and mainly about my own staff and my team at Super Training Gym. And I just thought, you know, that kind of seems like a dick move. We're a team. We do stuff as a team. We do stuff together. And I'm not going to go in there and 
and uh, flaunt that I'm in there uh, training every day and talk about my training split and so on, you know. So I decided to uh, come up here to Bodega Bay and, and enjoy the beach and enjoy the weather up here. But there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hills and there's it's just a lot of exercise to get in. So I'm like, well, at the very least, I'll walk. But because I've been prepared and because I've been messing with this for a while, uh, I started to run. I started to run some stairs. I started to do some of this with a 40 pound weight vest. Um, I did eight sprints up that brutal hill. That's uh, that's kind of down the road from me here it's probably about 150 yards uh worth of sprinting and I did eight of them and I probably did in about 25 minutes or so felt like I was going to puke my guts out all over the place it was it was uh very very difficult but I shifted gears and I don't even care I don't care I don't care about when we're opening back up um I do love to lift so as the second that we open up the doors to super training I'll be super pumped to get in there and do all those things but the best way to get out of a slump is number one, to be prepared. Number two is to not try to make things so difficult all the time. So let's say that you're not prepared. Let's say that you don't have a secondary skill set. You know, I, I've learned a lot of this from seeing good friends again, like someone like Jason Kalipa, who knows how to do all these different CrossFit movements. And it's like, well, if you know how to do a burpee or you know how to do like a thruster, like, what kind of weight do you need for a thruster to have a good workout? It's like go back and forth between doing uh, push-ups and thrusters or uh, burpees and curls. I mean, like with curls with a band or something, right? Like you can have these murderous workouts, but you wouldn't be able to do that unless you had a skill set. Have you really messed around or practiced like a box jump before? Um, have you done mountain climbers before? Do you have knowledge? Again, what's knowable? Do you have knowledge? Um, maybe for, let's say like our parents' generation or maybe for, um, our aunts or uncles' generation, they don't have that knowledge. So what do they do in time of quarantine when they can't get to the gym and use their elliptical? They do nothing because they don't, if they have something at their, at their house, maybe they decided to audible and, and do something there. Um, but you see how attached everyone gets to stuff. The set, so the second, uh, thing that's that's super important and they're not even really necessarily in order but the second thing is important to avoid a slump again is to really try to push off the ability to even get into one and kind of like a cheat meal you just don't ever really i think that a cheat meal i think it's a fun term to use so i still utilize it but i think that a cheat meal is part of your diet i think that a slump being in a slump is part of life and there's really no reason to like draw attention to it so you could potentially be thinking about, I'm in a slump from lifting. Or you can think about it, you know what, I'm really kicking a lot of ass on these walks. Because you could have taken a little break, you know, rather than a slump, maybe think about it as a little bit of a break. You know, you want to be honest with yourself too. Like, are you being a wimp? Are you being kind of a puss about it? Those are, those are logical things to be concerned about. But in my opinion, a lot of times people make exercise out to be way too hard. They make it out to be way too difficult. And that's how the slump happens in the first place. They do the same thing with their nutrition. They make their nutrition so hard and they use a lot of um, forceful techniques um, of um, like coercion. Like they, they will, um, if I don't do this, then, you know, I better do this or else. You know, if I, if I don't, if I don't get this kind of training in, then Monday I'm going no carbs for like seven days. Like I'm going all in. And, and then what happens when that doesn't happen? So you have to make sure that these are things that you want to do and kind of lean towards that. Find the things that you find interesting and start to go in that direction. And so, as I said, you know, earlier, you know, maybe you just shift gears and you try to do something a little bit different if you feel like, uh, like if you just don't, if you don't feel like doing something, then you also need to question your interest level a little bit uh, of like, let's say that you started a diet and you wanted to lose like 30 pounds. Okay. And you lost 10, but now you keep screwing up, you gained back five, you're unmotivated, you're on the couch and you're at that tipping point where you can go back and gain the weight back and have not made any progress, or you can kind of continue fighting for uh, this idea that you want to lose 30 pounds. If you're fighting with that too much, 
people that try to fight through drug addiction don't make it because it can't be a fight. It can't be a struggle. It has to be something that you really want to do. Therefore, you're not fighting with yourself for it. Therefore, it's not an internal battle. Um, somebody who lost 100 pounds, when you ask them in retrospect, how hard was that? They say, actually, you want to know what? It wasn't that bad. And the reason why they're able to say that is because their interest level was so high that they were like, I'm more interested in weighing less than I am waking up in the middle of the night and going through my pantry. I'm more interested in, in getting up off the couch and going for a walk a couple of times a day than I am in doing anything else. So if your interest level is wavering, that's okay. That's totally fine. But you might have to kind of redefine what you're doing. And that might be a good time to say, you know what? I'm not going to worry too much about uh, losing any more weight. I'm just going to focus on really not gaining any weight and I'm going to keep my exercise going. And then maybe in a couple of weeks when a desire comes back and it hits you again, uh, maybe you start kind of heading in that direction again. So that would be uh, some of my advice. You know, again, what I like to, what I like to say here is like, you want things to be an underhand pitch, you know? So throw yourself those underhand pitches. What do you really love to do? You know, don't be so hard. Don't be so hard on yourself all the time. Don't make things out to be so difficult all the time. Find some things that are simple. The things that are simple are going to be repeatable. The things that are simple and repeatable are going to be nearly impossible to get into a slump for. Like if somebody said, you know, when was the last time you went a week without a 10 minute walk? You'd be like, I don't know. It's like, I've been doing them for the last two, three years, you know, because maybe you've gone a day just cause like you didn't have an opportunity to get one in or whatever. You're not like real rigorous about it. But <clears throat> when things are kind of simple and when things are boiled down into their simplest form, again, no job is too great when it's boiled down into kind of smaller parts. Uh, then you're like, you know, I, I also refer to it as chump change. You know, it's chump change like that. Pff, it's easy. Like, dude, do uh, do 20 push-ups every day. Kidding me? Like someone said, hey, man, you know, do 20 push-ups every day for the year. Like when you first wake up, do 20 push-ups. Is that difficult to do? Um, there might be some days where you're like, oh, my wrist kind of hurts. I don't feel like getting on the ground. My back hurts. Like, you, you know, you can talk yourself out of it, but is there anything that's actually difficult about that? I've heard other people say, you know, they pop some push-ups every time they use the restroom for the day and they do 10 or 20 or something like that. So try to instill some disciplines that actually make sense, that aren't going to impede on the rest of your life, that aren't going to be these uh, giant mountains to climb. Because if it feels like it's too hard, it probably is, and those are going to be the things that you're going to get in a slump for. Boom. Hopefully you had this question burning deep inside you and uh, hopefully you can use this to help get yourself out of a rut. If this isn't your question, we are easily accessible. This is a super open platform. Um, this is your best way to get in touch with Mark Bell. Hit us up at Mark Bell's Power Project on Instagram at MB Power Project on uh, Twitter. Um, hit us up like like Mark said in the first episode, yell at a Saturday school or hashtag Saturday school, do whatever it takes to get our attention. Um, like I said, we're, we're super easily, you know, accessible. Uh, you have no more excuses. You can't say, uh, oh, I wish I could do this or I could do that. If only I could talk to Mark, this is your opportunity. Please take advantage of it for uh, any information on our uh, sponsors. If you want to support them because they support us, all links and everything will be down in the description. And again, please hit us up at Mark Bell's power project at MB power project. Uh, Mark Bell, where are you at? How many of you are guilty of making things way too hard for yourself? You know, give yourself that underhand pitch, you know, like think about the way that you would pitch to uh, your six year old son the way you would pitch him a ball, underhand pitch, you show him the ball, you hold the ball up and you say like, Hey, see the ball, keep your eye on the ball, keep your elbow up high. You're, okay. Here it comes. And you throw him an underhand pitch and you get some air under it. So the ball stays up in the air for a while so they can smash the hell out of it. So do the same thing for yourself, you know, serve yourself up those underhand pitches and knock them out of the freaking park with keeping things uh, super simple. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch y'all later.